Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Patricio. Uh, I don't know if you remember me. I I been part of this of this space of reflection a couple of years ago. And um, last time I was in Honduras, I was uh, giving the talk from the home for children where I've been doing ministry for the last twelve years. And and I don't know if you remember also, but I was talking about tango, and I use tango as a metaphor that can help us to relate to the mystery to God. This time I'm not going to speak about tango. I'm sorry, but I did. Um, I did a PowerPoint presentation. I'm sorry, uh, I had to record this talk because I am in Argentina right now. And because of the time difference, it's obvious that I wasn't going to be able to, to show you guys. So let me share the screen and thank you for inviting me again. I hope all of you are doing well. And I will share the screen and I will share the PowerPoint. Let me find it if I find it. There it is. Okay. The name of the presentation is From Slavery to Freedom, which is a very strong title and, and, and name for, for a talk, because freedom is something that we usually are looking for. We want to be free. And also, all of us, we experience different kind of slavery. Slavery, it could be external, we know that, but also and many times is internal, inner slavery. People that have, for example, addictions, they, they suffer this kind of slavery. And we have the deep desire of moving from the slavery to the freedom. And that's an invitation also that God is giving to us. This is a deep calling from God. God wants to make us free. So I want to reflect about slavery and about freedom. And in the Bible, we have this paradigmatic story about the Exodus and the journey of the people of Israel uh, walking towards the promised land. And I will use that like an archetype, like a paradigm that can help us to reflect on this topic. Actually, when we talk about freedom, that means that we are called to start moving. We are called to start walking. We are called to go from one place to another place, which means that's the opposite of remaining always in the same place, of remaining always in our comfort zones. We are called to go into the road and our human history and specifically the biblical tradition are full of these kind of examples. We, we can read in the Bible so many processions, pilgrims, exoduses, etc. Actually, the roots of the people of Israel, of Israel is referred to this kind of dynamic. Remember this expression of this book, a wandering Aramean was my father. And also the vocation of Abraham, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. Again, the invitation, the divine invitation is to have the courage in order to leave our comfort zone, our security, to leave whatever we know and go into the unknown. And that, that's something that requires faith. And faith is the opposite of fear, because usually fear uh, is so strong within ourselves that we can make decisions and we prefer to remain in our lack of freedom. Actually, fear uh, is very strong related to whatever we don't know. We are scared of the unknown. And that's a problem that we have. 
And the people of Israel, they have received a communitarian identity during the journey through the desert. Moves into a freely wandering, struggling, learning, growing journey in a wilderness, seeking to become a loving and beloved community. They receive their identity as people of God during the journey, walking in faith and trusting the voice of God, the calling, the vocation, walking to the freedom, walking to the promised land. And that's again a, a paradigm, like an archetype that refers to every, every one of us, every community, every, every nation, every religious, we are all called to do this kind of journey from slavery to freedom. And I want to I wanna use, again, this archetype, this paradigm of what was happening with the people that were slaves in Egypt. And if we go to the Hebrew, I'm not very good with Hebrew, and, and maybe now my strong accent in English is not, you know, very beautiful, but it is what it is, my friends. And Egypt in Hebrew means tight, narrow place. And we all experience in our lives many times uh, that we can be in places that are very tight. And when we are in places that are very tight, we start feeling like suffocated. We, we need to breathe, we need air, we need to open doors, we need to be in a, in a bigger space. So that's uh, something that we can experience and it's also a metaphor. That's why I wanna use this as a metaphor and we can ask ourselves, what are our personal airships? What is compressing me? What is narrowing my life down? Let's keep moving. Again, I want to repeat this. The divine invitation is always a continuous exodus from narrowness towards opening to universality. It's always the same dynamic. Whatever is coming from God always will open doors. Whatever is coming from God always will open windows. Whatever is coming from God always will open our hearts, our minds. Is this movement of openness from a narrow place, tight place to a very, very, very big space. Some information that today we have, uh, thanks to, to the science, uh, we can express with many doctors, uh, like this doctor from Spain, Carmen Ochoa, from the University of Madrid, Every day, our brain processes about 60,000 thoughts, of which 95% are involuntary. And which is even worse, 80% are negative. And this is kind of scary because science is teaching us that most of our ideas, our thinking has like a negative content. And today, thanks to science, we have so many, so much knowledge today that many diseases, we know this, are psychosomatic because our emotions are related to our way of thinking. That's why if we have this amount of negative thinking, it is so important for us to have a mental hygiene. Harvard University says that 60 to 80% of the pathologies we suffer suffer from, sorry, such as diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, have a direct relationship with the emotional world, and this is related to our way of thinking. The psychologists are teaching us that thoughts create reality. So obviously, if we are every day having 80% of our ideas, our thoughts are negative, we are going to create that external space. And that's gonna be a very toxic environment. Again, I repeat the importance for us to do some kind of mental hygiene in order to be in control of our mind and avoid the opposite. Because many times, if we are honest, 
we will realize that the mind is controlling us. In our mental prison, in this newspaper, The Economist, they say that this generation is stressed, depressed, and obsessed. Today, we have the pandemic of uh, depression and anxiety and stress. We all suffer this. That's why we need to do something about it, because that's a very tight, narrow kind of way of living. And we need to, we're going to get sick if we continue living in this in this pattern and pattern and repeating this, this crazy cycle. That's why God wants to take us from this Egypt, from this slavery dynamic in our mind, our prison, and take us to the promised land. We can ask ourselves, because the mental noise brings confusion. So the question is, I am master of my mind or I am a slave of my mind? Am I being free or am I a puppet of my mind? I love this, this picture. This was done by an Argentinian guy. I can't remember his name now, but this is fantastic. Just pay attention to it because it's so obvious that in our minds, we have like the movie, it's like a matrix and we have a program this programming that is uh, in many ways affecting the way we think, the way we live, education, culture, religion, beliefs. This is our programming. And we need to realize and to become aware of this in order to move forward, in order to leave this prison behind and start walking, go to the road and do the journeys through the desert walking to the promised land. The challenge of thinking different, differently, breaking out the mold, breaking paradigms, becoming aware of the mental program that condition us and making the decision of going beyond. When you have an opinion about something, your mind looks outside for everything that corroborates your idea. That's what we are experiencing on social media on the, with the algorithms, we are always uh, trying to find people that think the way we think. And that's a big problem that we have in every aspect in our lives, especially in politics, but I don't, I don't want to go into that place. Remember, remember this uh, mystic Rumi, why do you stay in jail when the door is so open? Again, this is so sad, like the Israel, Israel people, when they were walking on the desert, they started complaining and they were saying, we would prefer to, to be slaves instead of being free, walking in this desert and struggling so much. And that's a temptation that we have. Many times we don't want to be free. We prefer to remain in the comfort zone. That's why you don't tie yourself down. Tony de Mello, Anthony de Mello, this Jesuit priest, he, he, I love that guy and, and his teaching about this is so strong. He said, think beyond mental schemes. He who thinks as a Marxist, liberal, Christian or Jew does not think, but is thought by his ideology or beliefs. You are a slave if you don't think about you live asleep and you are thought by an idea. We are afraid of flying for ourselves, afraid of freedom, of loneliness. We prefer to be slaves to schemes. We tie ourselves to change and then we complain. So part of the process of waking up and also I would say growing up uh, means first to realize that we had been living in a way in which our horizon of understanding is and was very small. We were just putting our attention on, on my tiny world 
using this kind of mentality, like the tr tribal logic. And maybe this is a time to leave these glasses behind and start opening my vision. And this is a, an invitation from, from the gospel, leaving behind judgments, racism, discrimination, and having the courage to meet someone that I perceive different to me. Our ego likes a lot to demonize people, especially those that we consider different. There are so many cases where people suffer discrimination because other people are demonizing them just because they are different. And that's the tendency of our ego because we are scared for whatever we don't know. We are called to spend time with different people to run away from what it is comfortable if we want to grow up, if we want to, to go into the promised land, if we want just to remain in Egypt in the comfort zone, that's fine, but we are not going to grow and we are going to continue as slaves. Some teachers say that this is not a matter of being a believer or not being a believer. This is a matter of people that are awake or people that are sleeping. So that's the question. Do we want to be awake or we want to continue sleeping? And the last invitation is live where you fear to live. I like metaphors, as I said, and an orchestra is a nice metaphor to understand that we enjoy music based on the synergy of various instruments. Let's not just listen to the same instrument. There is a symphony to discover and enjoy. The key word in an orchestra is diversity. We need different instruments to achieve the beauty of a piece of music. And this metaphor also relates to the core message of our faith. We believe in a Trinitarian God, and God is a symphony. God is a music of communion in diversity. And within our churches, some groups, their mentality is so tight that they are so afraid of diversity. And they tend, and they want to control everything, and they just want to have uni uh, uniformity. Obsessing thinkers tend to have a high level of anxiety. And obviously, sometimes we meet people like this, that they just talk about themselves. It's just about me, 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 my pronouns, my family, my past, my history, my boss, my country, my president, mine, 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 mine. It's a moon of the mind that is going to put us in prison thinking in circles from one to another. Uh, and we just keep repeating ideas over and over again. And we know this, that this kind of mentality is always in the future with a lot of stress and anxiety or is attached to the past, repeating in circles over and over again, the same patterns. And obviously we cannot be free, we cannot be happy. We cannot experience a beautiful life if we are all the time in the future or in the past, we cannot be happy in the future. The only place that we can be happy is in the present moment. That's why we need to be awake. We need to do something about it. Politics, religion, economic, in short, every cultural expression is filtered through a glass that limits our horizon of understanding. As the Jewish mystic says, we do not see things as they are, but as, as we are. That's why the journey is first becoming aware that we are conditioned by our mental scheme, education, opinions. Second, take distance and observe it to finally have the courage to make the decision to go further. Our ego also sometimes is so arrogant and many times, uh, what our ego wants to do is to control God. Our natural egocentrism wants to make God and all other people what we want them to be. 
instead of accepting the mystery of God, instead of accepting the mystery of the other people, we just want to control them and to change them. And we want them to be the way we think they should be. And that's, again, that's a trap of the ego. And that's not healthy. And we do that with God. We create God in our image. These gods become a reflection and projection of ourselves. We produce a tribal God. It is very difficult to let God be a God who is greater than our culture and our projections. For me, it's something that makes me kind of angry when I go to the social media or YouTube, especially here in Latin America. I don't know why, but there are so many priests that when you listen the content of what they are expressing, is awful. The, the image of God is just awful. It's about punishment. It's about a God that is angry, that, that kind of craziness. And I believe that at the end of the day, I, I'm not a psychologist, but I believe that it's just something that they have in their hearts. They want to punish people. They want to condemn people. They want to discriminate people. And they just are projecting those uh, awful areas of their hearts, projecting that on God. Allow God to be God, the journey of faith demands that we let go of our image of God and our image of ourselves and learn to live in the mystery, avoid controlling or trying to domesticate God. We're almost close to the end of this presentation. And when we go to the history of Jesus, we know that after that epiphany that Jesus had uh, on his baptism, uh, he, he had such a strong experience that after the baptism, he changed his life forever. Actually, that's the beginning of his public ministry. He didn't go back to Nazareth. He was living there. And then he started just walking all over, preaching, preaching the gospel. And if you remember the first commandment that Jesus expresses, expressed after his baptism was this one, metanoia. That is the first commandment he expressed. Metanoia, change your mind, change your mind. Mental openness to receive the newness of God in Christ. We cannot grow if we don't remain open and vulnerable to what it is new and different. And that's the meaning, the literal meaning of gospel, evangelio in Spanish, in Greek is very similar. Those are two words. And this is from Richard Rohr. We know this, but I think it's so important to keep repeating this. Jesus didn't came to change the mind of God about humanity because he did not need changing. Jesus came to change the, man, the mind of humanity about God. Do we believe and live in the good news? And as I said before, that's the literal meaning of gospel, evangelio which is something that we experience as good and also new. And many theologians, they believe that Jesus was killed, not because people were experiencing, experiencing something good. Obviously, we don't have a problem with whatever is good in our life. But a lot of people in every time, in every culture, uh, many times we have problem to whatever is new. And that's why the religious authorities, they killed Jesus and they put him on the cross because he didn't like whatever was new coming from Jesus. So just let's keep moving. And the new way of understanding God is not, as Richard Rohr says, like a, a white guy on, on the throne up there, but it's actually this God that we are breathing the spirit, the Ruah, the breathing each other with all life, the great name of Yahweh. Breath is a wind of change, the transformation in what we live and we are. And I love this word transformation because so many Christians, they live this kind of spirituality, which is not about transformation, but it is, that it's about transactional, transactions a transactional kind of living our face. Many people believe that we have to do something in order to, to, 
to convince God, uh, like like an exchange. I give something to God. I God has to give something to me. That's not the 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 God of Jesus. The God of Jesus is just about transformation. And Jesus on the cross again, communion. Communion in diversity. This is a the prayer of Jesus in the cross. He is crying to God, the Father, the Mother, to be one, as they are one. That's why the church, all the churches have, they have the evangelical imperative to be a sign of united humanity, walking together with no one outside, united like the Father and the Son. This is the center of our faith, especially today in this in this war that we are experiencing so many wars, so many violence, so much polarizations in our societies, so much division. So the process of going from a narrow, tight place to the promised land, we need to make decisions in order, for example, to grow in our compassion. And compassion is universal. Compassion is not selective. I cannot say to myself, I will be compassionate with this and that, and then with these other people, I'm not going to be compassionate. Compassion is universal. If it is not universal, it's not compassion. So we need to open our hearts and our minds, going from a narrow heart to an expanding heart. In one word, becoming universal, building a home for everyone without excluding anyone from a dualistic mentality to a unity mentality, from the singular I to the plural we. Stop talking about myself. I'm not the center of the universe. Realizing that we are all connected. We are just one big human family. And again, Rumi, you were born with wings. Why prefer to crawl through life? I know that fear uh, is very present in our lives. But again, the opposite of fear is faith. And we trust in Jesus, our friend, our Lord. And when we trust him, we can let go of our fear. Actually, if I don't remember bad, I think the expression not, uh, not to, to, to be fear in the Bible is like in 365 times, like one, like each time for, for every day, God is reminding us this message of not being afraid because it's the opposite of faith, it's the opposite of love. So sorry about my strong accent. Uh, I've been the last four or five months in Argentina. I haven't been spoken English in a while. So it's been challenging for me. And, and I had to do the exercise of leaving my comfort zone and allowing myself, you know, to put myself in this experience of sharing in a different language, the God that I am in love with and the God I truly believe. Thank you for listening and God bless you all. And hopefully we can have the courage to keep walking on the desert, going to the horizon of the promised line to be free. God bless you. Thank you.